Good morning. Good morning, Lois. I'm just getting my homework. <laughs> okay. Sounds like the camp is there. It is. Oh. Cute. It's cute to see them. Yes, and it's loud. Yes. <laughs> so Liz isn't here yet, but... Hmm. Here she is. Yay. There's a million of them. Yes. Awesome. Good morning, Liz. Good morning. How are you? Okie dokie. Yes, yeah, same. <laughs> Good. Um, okay, so we are at chapter 18 in Bud Midbar. The and, beginning? Yeah. I think what we'll do is we'll read So we're going to, we'll read through 20. Chapter 20? No, no, uh, uh, verse uh, 20. Oh, uh, verse. <laughs> sorry. I forgot my reading list, so I'm going to ask you to do that. I'll read. <laughs> okay, excellent. Okay. I'll wait for Liz to sit. <laughs> I'll start. Oh, reading. Okay. okay. Hashem said to Aaron, <clears throat> you, your sons, and your father's household with you shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary, and you and your sons with you shall bear the iniquity of your priesthood. Also, your brethren, the tribe of Levi, the tribe of your father, shall you draw near with you, and they shall be joined to you and minister to you. You and your sons with you shall be before the tent of the testimony. They shall safeguard your charge and the charge of the entire tent. But to the holy vessels and to the altar, they shall not approach, that they not die, they as well as you. They shall be joined to you and safeguard the charge of the tent of meeting for the entire service of the tent, and an alien shall not approach you. You shall self safeguard the charge of the holy and the charge of the altar, and there shall be <clears throat> no more wrath against the children of Israel. And I, behold, I have taken your brethren, the Levites, from among the children of Israel. To you they are presented as a gift for Hashem to perform the service of the tent of meeting. You and your sons with you shall safeguard your priesthood regarding every matter of the altar and within the curtain, and you shall serve. I have presented your priesthood as a service that is a gift, and any alien who approaches shall die. Hashem spoke to Aaron. Oh. And I, behold, I have given you the safeguard of my heave offering of all the sanctities of the children of Israel. I have given them to you for distinction and to your sons as an eternal portion. This shall be yours from the most holy, from the fire, their every offering, their every meal offering, their every sin offering, their every guilt offering, that which they return to me as most holy. It shall be yours and your sons. In the most holy shall you eat it every male shall eat it it shall it shall be holy for you <clears throat> and this shall you eat oh, and you shall be yours what is set aside from the gift from from all their wavings of the children of israel have i presented them to you and to your sons and daughters with you as an eternal portion every person in your household may eat it all the best of your oil and the best of your wine and grain their first which they give to Hashem, to you I have given them. 
The first fruits of everything that is in their land, which they bring to Hashem, shall be yours. Every pure person in your household may eat it. Every segregated property in Israel shall be yours. Hmm. Every first issue of the womb of any flesh that they offer to Hashem, whether man or beast, shall be yours. But you shall surely redeem the firstborn of man and the firstborn of an impure beast shall, be, shall you redeem. Those that are to be redeemed from one month shall you redeem according to the valuation. Five silver shekels by the sacred shekel, it is 20 gerot. But the firstborn of an ox or the firstborn of a sheep or the firstborn of a goat, you shall not redeem. They are holy. Their blood shall you throw upon the altar and their fat shall you cause to go up in smoke. A fire offering, a satisfying aroma to Hashem. Their fresh flesh shall be yours like the beast of the waving and the right thigh shall it be yours. Everything that is set aside from the sanctities that the children of Israel raise up to Hashem have I given you and your sons and daughters with you as an eternal portion. It is an eternal salt-like covenant before Hashem for you and your offspring with you. Hmm. Um, you know, just also do, uh, just finish with verse 20. Okay. Hashem said to Aaron, in their land you shall have no heritage, and a share shall you not have among them. I am your share and your heritage among the children of Israel. Okay, so there's a there's a lot of interesting stuff here. So first of all, this is being spoken to Aaron. It's not Moshe to tell Aaron, or it's not Moshe and Aaron. It's uh, God is speaking directly to Aaron. Um, and so he seems to be laying out the parameters of his position. So what we call the Kohen. Um, is now being explained to us and the relationship between the Kohen and the rest of the tribe of Levi are being generally described here. Uh, since it was something we've been talking about a lot the last few times, I, I just thought to focus on that first. So in verse two, it says, the gam esachecha and also your brothers Matel Levi, the tribe of Levi, Shevet Avicha, the tribe of your father, Hakrev Itach, which is brought close with you, Ve'ilavu Alecha Sharsucha. So that word Ve'ilave means to like accompany, to accompany somebody, like Mala, uh, Malava Malka means to accompany the queen, that meal at the end of Shabbos. A lavaya is a funeral where you accompany the dead. So, um, so that means, so they will, the lavu alecha v'yisharsucha, they will accompany you and they will serve you, you, your sons with you before the tent of meeting. So, so far, the relationship is described as a kind of shared one. They will accompany you and they will serve you. And then it says, Vishamru Mishmartacha, they will guard what you're supposed to guard. Umishmeret kol ha'ohel, and the guarding of all the tent. So they, in other words, their role is going to be as guards. Now, the truth is, if we go back to the description of Levi going all the way back to uh, after the post Dina episode, uh, not the post Dina episode, the post rape, but the, you know, Shimon and Levi. So Levi, it, it, would, it would be sort of in keeping with the kind of reputation of Levi 
that they should be the guards of what is sanctified. After all, the tribe Levi at the time calls out his language when he, you know, uh, in anger, sort of uh, in frustration, kind of rebukes his father. So his language was, let's see here. They, uh, should he have been allowed to treat our sister like a prostitute? They replied. So they are claiming that the they need to take action. It seems like to punish him for what he's done but also to like send a message to others that this is not going to be tolerated, right? In other words, so when they kill the people of Shechem, you, you, you could see it as you know, an irate kind of punishment uh, for what was done, but you you can also um, you can also see it as sending a message uh, to others that this this kind of thing won't be tolerated. Um, and then we saw how does Levy get their position? Levy gets their position by joining with Moshe in uh, punishing the people that were uh, bowing down to the to idols at the time of the golden calf. So it seems like even his, if you go back, it's fitting, let's just say that, it seems fitting for Levi to have this job of guarding the sanctuary. What's, the, and again, guarding the sanctuary from people who are not supposed to be there, the stranger. There are people that are not supposed to be there that are not supposed to have access. So putting them there as guards seems like an extremely appropriate position, especially I was suggesting before that as opposed to the tribe of Shimon, this is something where Ramosha Shapiro also mentioned this. If you look at, a blessed memory, if you look at how the tribes are eventually situated in the land of Israel, the land that they occupy in the land of Israel, the one, what becomes, let's say the tribe of Shimon, where their land is located. So their land is completely surrounded by Yehuda. They don't have in, an independent border or boundary as if God is saying, I need them to be watched. They are not, they are not to be uh, trusted on their own, the tribe of Shimon. Uh, actually, in the, in the Pinchas story, it's going to be like a prince from the tribe of Shimon, who's the one who stands up to Moshe with the Midianite woman and who's killed by Pinchas. He's, he's from the tribe of Shimon. Shimon doesn't seem, they seem to be, you know, care that you could say, you could tell the story of the tribe of Shimon as a continuation of what happened after, you know, in the Dina story uh, with Shimon being sort of hot-headed, um, open to rebellion uh, and never really totally getting fixed. It is it, it, when Yosef keeps one of the tribes, you know, one of the brothers, he sends them back to get Benjamin, to get Benjamin. He keeps one of them as a hostage. The one he keeps is Shimon. And if you work the story back, even though we don't have uh, conclusive evidence about this, you, you might want to guess that Shimon was one of the primary people 
who were instigating the brothers to kill Yosef. It, you you can do a sort of you can you can knock out a bunch of them you could you you could knock out Ruvain doesn't seem to want to kill Yosef he wants to, he seems to want to bring him back to his father Yehuda doesn't want to kill Yosef he's he, he decides to sell Yosef so it's not Ruvain and Yehuda it's not it's most likely not the children of the maid servants the, the brothers that are from the maid servants they seem to at least according to the narrative have gotten along okay with Yosef. So now you have like Yisachar, Zvulun, God, and Asher, right? Um, and Levi. So, um, and Shimo. So those are your, are your, you know, the people that may have instigated. So Levi is in a small group. I mean, uh, Shimon's in a small group of people that might have instigated. Uh, and the fact that Yosef keeps him as a prisoner suggests that, you know, that might be another piece of evidence, not conclusive, but another piece of evidence. So you you have like these moments um, uh, that might suggest to us that Shimon as a tribe never gets completely fixed when it comes to this problem of a kind of anger, unbridled anger, and and in a way that can be rebellious you know can rabbi be, karsh also yeah. shimon is not mentioned in the zos habracha the, uh, in the tribes right <laughs> so let's look there for a second um chapter 33 of devarim You have Ruvain is in verse six. Yehuda is in verse seven. Levi's in verse eight. Binyamin's in verse 12. Yosef's in verse 13. Zulun in 18, Yisachar also in 18, God in 20, Don in 22, Naftali in 23, uh, Naftali 23, Usher 24, That's it. Yeah, so let's just somebody. Do you have in your, or oh, you can't read. Uh, but in your, do you have the art school one, Lois? Yeah, well, I have the so, big, the, um, oh, you have the job. Yeah. All right, right. Let's, just, let's just look at 24. divides them up here and there's no Shima, you know it <laughs> yeah thank you for pointing that out yeah if you look in this map you see this map yes so you see he put shimon in there wait do you have it yeah. where is yehuda where am i i can't tell it do you see Shimon in there? I can't tell. Well, they have but, Shimon. Yeah, here. I know approximately it's where here. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So notice oh. it doesn't, that was the Ramosha Shapiro's point. It doesn't have its own boundaries. Uh huh. Right. Yehuda.